Hi teachers, today's video is about differentiation and your gifted students. Differentiation is something we all know works and we should do, but it's not always easy to manage. And when I'm talking about gifted students, I'm not just talking about um, differentiation in terms of we sit in a small group and I give this child a, little, child a little extra something because I know he or she can handle it. No, I mean gifted students in terms of the entire grade level curriculum is really not challenging enough for this student. Uh, you know, that student that's sitting in the back of your room and looks at you like, really? physical change, chemical change, that's the best you've got? No. I'm talking about those gifted kids. So what's the best way to help those kids, teach those kids, and make sure school doesn't become the most boring place on earth for these kids? All right, with all that being said, what, what have I done in the past to help in this capacity? Let's look at it by subject, English language arts. This is an easy place to begin with differentiation because it lends itself so well. Um, I'm a big believer in Donalyn Miller and the importance of independent reading time. Step one would be to make sure you have appropriate materials in your classroom library. All right, aside from that, what else have we got? Um, steering a gifted student towards a new genre, helping them to find something new in literature to be passionate about. Um, I've also had kids that really just wanted to kind of hunker down in a series or something they were already passionate about. Conference time is also a great opportunity for differentiation. Of course, the gifted child can be part of the class discussion when we're all looking at um, simile or metaphor or whatever the skill is. But then when conference time comes around, we can um, differentiate there by talking about more abstract elements of literature, such as symbolism. Now, when it comes to the writing component of language arts instruction, I've had good luck in the past finding writing contests for my gifted kids to participate in. Um, they really seem to like that the audience of the contest is bigger than just our school. Um, so that would sort of ignite a passion and an excitement about the writing opportunity. Another project I've done in the past is to take the novel that the student has been really into and to say, okay, now I want you to introduce a new character to this book. I want you to make up a new character. I want you to write the characterization, you know, all of everything you can about this character. And then I would like to know how the character you create for your novel changes the plot. So rather than, you know, because a lot of teachers, have, they've already done sort of the change the ending of the book, but to introduce a new character, to get really thorough in that character description, and then to discuss the way that character could affect the plot, um, has been a success for me in the past. Kids have really liked that activity. Also, to um, take a novel and, you know, you know, when you're talking to your whole class and you say things like, um, imagine, you know, putting pictures in your mind as you read and imagine if this were a movie. Well, your gifted kids could actually write a screenplay. And I've had kids that were so excited about this in the past, they even composed music on the iPad or, and came up with, you know, the actor I've chosen to play this part would be, I mean, in their mind, they're really mapping out this screenplay. Uh, those are both great ways to um, enhance your writing curriculum. To be honest, at my school, we are departmentalized and I don't teach the math, so I don't have experience and can't really speak to the math. But science, I can talk about. Science is a great area to do some stretching of your curriculum for your gifted kids. Um, we've done projects in the past where I called the school business office and found out what our monthly power bill um, amounts to. And of course it's divided into buildings like the gym is this much and the lunchroom is this much and the building with admin offices or whatever. And so I presented that information to my gifted kids and of course they added it all up and multiplied by 12, figure out what we're spending on power for the year, and then presented them with the challenge of coming up with a presentation where um, they would come up with ways the school could reduce their power. And then they put this together in Google Slide in a presentation form and presented it at our 
collective morning meeting. So they had a big audience for that too. And um, again, it was interesting for the audience, but it was also authentic learning. And um, I think the kids had a, a good sense of a purpose behind that type of activity. With a little collaboration between myself and the sixth grade science teacher, I've worked it out in the past so that some of my gifted kids could go over to the middle school building on sixth grade lab day. Now it was up to the middle school teacher to decide how much my fifth grader could participate, but my assignment for the fifth grader was to go and observe and then put together a presentation for our class to say, here's something really cool we're gonna do next year, here's what I've observed about it. In history, I've done things, again, presentation style, but um, I'll, if I know that we're, say, a month out from getting to a certain period in history, I'll have my gifted child, I'll say, okay, look, our text does not give enough information about this important person. I need you to do some research for me and then come up with some points that are not in the textbook that I can add to my presentation when I um, talk to the, teach this to the class and they sort of feel like you know wow I'm, I'm the teacher's assistant and so that's that's been successful in the past um, but then again you know just so that they don't wear out on always presenting everything themselves there it's sort of you know a deal between you and your gifted child when one of the students realized we weren't going to get to a certain time period that school year um, for example our curriculum goes through the Civil War and this child was really fascinated with World War II so he asked if um, at the end of the year he could put together a presentation on World War II uh, but the and I of course was thrilled but I said here's the catch your presentation can have no words no text pictures only and that way the student had to be able to look at the picture and teach his peers something about that time period or that you know um, battle or whatever it was based on the picture for example it was world war ii so he would have a picture he could look at uniforms he could look at weapons um, of course he rehearsed this ahead of time but it was nice that he was so knowledgeable and I knew that based on how he was able to present from the pictures but it was also interesting for the other children and they didn't feel like they were reading someone's presentation. It's not unusual for your gifted kids to become sort of hyper focused on one area for a while. I'm super into dinosaurs, I'm really into rockets, I'm really into horses or whatever the topic is. The secret to working with those gifted kids is the relationship you build with them. And then as, you know, finding out their likes and dislikes, and then as they start to trust you, they will be more accepting of the assignments you give because they realize you're not just trying to saddle them with extra work. You know, you never want them to feel like they're being punished for being smart. So these are authentic, valuable exercises that benefit the gifted child in many ways from research to public speaking, I mean, more than I can even come up with. I hope these ideas will give you some ideas for how to best serve your gifted population.